Alright, all my Detroit Piston fans and all my Detroit fans, all my Motor City Sports Talk fans, make sure you guys go check out Piston Mike. We got him over 100 followers, so make sure you check him out. Everything Pistons, man, he gonna hold it down and do his thing just strictly on the Pistons thing. You know, I got the lines of Pistons, but man, we always trying to help people get their channel up. Let's get him to 200 next, 300 next, 400 next, 500 next, and let's get him all the way to a rack so he can start making that bag. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you go over to Piston Mike as you see it on the screen. Let's get him to 200, then 300, then 400, then 500, and the whole shebang. Peace. All right, let's talk about should the Detroit Pistons have traded up for LaMelo Ball? Was he worth it? Let's talk about it. Check out our Detroit Pistons Talk playlist. Don't forget you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all my social media links in the description. Appreciate the love support. Uh, if you want to advertise your on the channel, chop it up, video request, hit me up there. Uh, check the community tab, looking for topics for the next live stream, okay? But um, today, LaMelo won rookie of the year. He got injured, uh, first injury, but he did come back, and the Charlotte Hornet missed the playoffs. Had he continued, had he stayed healthy, I think the Hornets would have made the playoffs. They probably would have been in the sixth or fifth or even the fourth seed. Not saying they would have advanced to make noise, but I think he turned it around. I think Terry Rozier was there last year. They didn't win that many games at the Kimba. They didn't win that many games with Kimba, okay? But um, I, I, do tref I do think he gave that franchise an energetic feel. Now, there was a lot of people in comment section around social media that didn't believe he was good enough. Now, this ain't to say that he won't fall off. All right. It's not to say that he may not have a situation like Michael Carter Williams, but he looked like his his star is shining bright. He seemed like somebody that could change a, a franchise around, you know, outside the top two. You know, he seemed to be what Killian, they think Killian could be right now. All right. It was a lot of Piston fans or people around the Internet that said he wasn't the real deal. That said he wasn't playing versus competition. His daddy was stupid. You know, but he can play. Dribble with confidence. Play with the aggression his brother Lonzo don't play with. Shoot better. Oh, look at his shooting percentage. He can't shoot. He can't shoot. Uh, uh, look at his CJ. What says he can shoot? And he shot the ball pretty well in the NBA. It was so many critiques about him, you know, that it looked like the Timberwolves <laughs> and the Golden State Warriors had. And I think the Golden State Warriors made a decision based off his father saying that he didn't want to go there. Imagine if LeVar... Imagine if LeBar didn't say that. He'd probably be a warrior. And the Warriors need him, you know? You know, you can play Draymond at the four. You can play this kid at the three. Let him be the point four and bring Clay back. You know, they probably can fight with the powers that be, you know, in the Western Conference. They made a mistake. Did Minnesota make a mistake? I don't know anything. They go to Minnesota as far as in that franchise right now with Timberwolves. Don't seem to grow. Don't seem to, uh, you know, it don't seem to... Uh, you know, do what they need to do, all right? It seemed like they had a graveyard for players, not Minnesota, but the Timberwolves. But, you know, this kid proved to have star power. You know, I think Charlotte, I think it's one of the best cities to move to. Either there or Raleigh, I can't remember. But, you know, you know, North Carolina in general, the Carolinas are waiting for somebody to, to bubble, you know. It's a booming scene down there. The jobs are booming. Got great weather down there. Got some great vacation spots, especially at Myrtle Beach. It's in the prime, you know, prime area. And uh, a lot of growth down there. So, you know, imagine if the Car Car the Carolinas became what Houston is becoming. You know, I know Houston is 700 square square, square miles. But uh, imagine if they came, they became, you know, like that. And he can, he can be the, the star of that. Where Cam Newton left off, he could pick up. And, you know, Michael Jordan just said the other day, that he don't play his players at one-on-one because -on -one he don't want to hurt their confidence. You know, and he's very demanding, and, you know, he's kind of that, you know, he's the only owner that can smack Malik Monk in the back of his head, you know, playfully and get away with it. Imagine a white guy smack a player in the back of his head or a guy that didn't play in the league. You know, Michael Jordan might have his horse. You know, they didn't believe Kimball was worth a Supermax contract, and they was right. Kimball went to Boston and stunk it up, and now they're trying to trade him. But this kid, he going he gonna to probably make his 200-plus million back off this kid. You know, he, he this kid might put the whole Charlotte on the map. You know, you got some blowing, you got some music, music people down there blowing up. He was the star that Minnesota needed. He was the star, you know, that can carry, that can help, you know, carry the back end of Steph Curry career and be the next star in Golden in, in Oakland, and, and and bring some razzle dazzle to that arena when they can have fans, because you know California was real, real strict on the COVID stuff. You know, he is the the guy that would have, you know, super shined in Detroit. He would have been the guy to Detroit. And he's not saying Killian won't become, but right now he's that guy. He did a little interview accepting his Rookie of the Year award with uh, 
TNT and he had the stage on and everything, you know. So, and also this is one of the prime uh, uh, teams that LeVar Ball wanted him to go to. You know, and it's just, it's just to the point where I say this first. Minnesota and Oakland, the Warriors, they missed out. This kid, no matter what James Harden do, no, James Wiseman do in this league, if Melo do anything similar, he's going to be seen as a, as a bigger success because it's a guard's game now. Now, back in the day, Kareem Will it used to be a big man's game. Before Jordan came along, they didn't believe Jordan could carry a basketball team to a championship, you know, without another, you know, great big fella. You know, you had Hakeem Elijah and Ralph Sampson until he got injured. Will, Bill Russell, you keep going on and on. In the 90s, you had Hakeem, you know, you had Shaquille O'Neal, David Robinson. I mean, you keep going on and on. Lonzo Mourning, Dukembe Mutombo. So, you know, right now, the Warriors drafted, you know, like they were going to be healthy with Clay. They knew Clay was injured, but they were drafting like they were going to have a healthy team next year. And that was going to be Clay, Steph Curry, and Draymond. And they needed that guy to really control the pain. So I see what they was thinking, but talent over need, okay? And in the NBA, you always take the talent. When you up that high, you always take the talent. And before I talk about the Pistons moving up, and also you had, you know, Cleveland could have moved up easily. You know, a lot of teams that was ahead of us could have moved up, and they didn't, you know. If LaMelo was such a far, uh, fire, th- show fire thing, man, he wasn't. But he had the talent to be, the, him and Anthony Iris had the talent to be number one overall people. I mean, players. But this is exactly what Detroit needed, you know. And not to say Killian, Beef Stew, and Stewart, and, and, um, and Sadiq Bey ain't that guy. But honestly, I would take all three of them, trade them for the mellow ball. And I, and I think, cause, because I would say this, it's hard to get a superstar in Detroit. We, the last one we drafted was Grant Hill. It's hard for us to trade for. We almost had Kobe. It's hard for us to get that Kobe Bryant, Kevin Garnett, you know, Allen Iver. It's hard for us to get that superstar. And I knew the kid had superstar potential. The only thing that's gonna stop him, cause he got the work ethic, is off the off the off the court situations. But he's been living like a pro since high school. But I definitely think I take all of that, all the assets, and trade up for him. That's how big time he was. Now am I happy to have? Stewart and Beef Stew and uh, Sadiq Bay and Killian Hayes, absolutely. I think we headed in the right direction. You know, Stewart showed great shine leaps he made last year. Sadiq Bay showed great leaps he made last year. And Killian Hayes showed us a small glimpse. So, absolutely, I'm happy for what, how it panned out. Now they could be in position to get a superstar in Mobley Green, Cunningham, Suggs. They're in that position now. But last year... I was screaming and hollering that they should move up for this kid. And some people in the comment section didn't believe in his, his game. They was going to his NBL, he was shooting percentages and this, that. And that's fair, but some people, one thing you got to understand, an 18, 19-year-old kid ain't a finished product. Okay? That's one thing you got to understand. He's not a finished product. Two, he's going to improve. And, you know, the NBA, you know, you heard, I think Boyanovich said it, but for sure, Lucas said it, the NBA is easier to score. Cause think about it overseas, they got they can play zone in the NBA. You can play match that matchup zone, but it's not a true zone. Okay, you know I, I feel that zones are are amateurish. They are a part of basketball, but I look at them as little league and middle school, high school, college, and overseas. It's amateur basketball. True basketball is you pick your man up one on one and stay out of foul trouble. But you know you see you look at what Luca and I think Bojanovic said. It's easier in the NBA to score. And I think this kid proved it again. Because now you have coaches, you know, in the NBA that's encouraging you to, to jack up threes. Now you have coaches in the NBA that's encouraging you to play this wide open style and on a free on a on a uh, fast break, just jack up shots. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just the way it is. Now and I think in today guard driven league. I think LaMelo fit perfect, even though he's not a committed killer scorer. But he's one of those balanced dudes that, like they said today, he said he watched Pistol Pete and, you know, you watch Magic Johnson. He put you in that in that, in that realm. And he was, the, he was the hero that Minnesota desperately needed. He was a hero that War, the Oakland and the Golden State Warriors needed. I understand Cleveland had Garland and, and Secton. 
But once again, we drafted for talent. They should have moved up, and I, I think the Pistons should have moved up four spots no matter what it would have took. You know, even if it would have took this year. Pitt. But ultimately, you live to fight another day, and if the Pistons get a top two or three pick, this won't be a conversation. If they get a five, six, seventh, eighth, and so on pick, this is going to be hot conversation that they – should continue to consolidate draft picks and move up and consolidate assets to move up for guys they think are going to be superstars like LaMelo Ball. And knowing our history with the draft lottery, you know, other than the Orlando pick, I think we're going to be here. I think Tuesday they say the draft, if it's accurate. We're going to be here Tuesday night. We're going to be here Wednesday night. We're going to be here Thursday morning. Okay, if it's true, that it's Tuesday. And we're going to be bitching and harping, you know, so it's okay it's okay to complain sometimes about how we should have traded that pick this year and we should have had a mellow ball and this wouldn't be a conversation. But like I said, we end up with some of those guys that's in the top four in the draft lottery. If we get three or two or, if, you know, we lucky enough to get one, I think that you're going to uh, you're going to uh, you're going to say perfect. Because had it been Charlotte pick, we moved up for LaMelo, I guarantee you, they probably would have had the number one overall pick. So come Tuesday, whenever the draft lottery is, you know, I think you're going to have situations where I think people are going to start to believe me. Consolidate, take these picks, consolidate them, assets, move on and move up for surefire guys like this. But if we're able to get our hands on Jalen Green, we able to get our hands on Mobley, Suggs, or Kay Cunningham, Cunningham, you know, I think the Pistons – are going in the right, maybe not next year, but I think the year after next year, they, they're going to be a dangerous team. And I think the East is starting to flip over with the Hawks, the Knicks, the Boston. And I think you're going to see the Pistons, you know, be in that situation. And I think sooner than later, you're going to have, you know, a team that's going to be fighting for, you know, an Eastern Conference final, especially if they have durability. But hey, let me know what you guys think. we on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Links in the description. Want to make a donation? Cash up, CJ Good313 in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. That's what a donate, share, share the video. Check out our Detroit Piston Talk playlist. Let me know what you think in the comment section. One time for the one time. Mercy Sports Talk. Appreciate the love.